Hey guys, this is Odd One Gaming. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. So today's video is going to be about something that I already spoke in my previous one yesterday. Uh, and I mentioned that, you know, there's going to be something really interesting that I was going to test out because I knew that I saw something like this out there. And that's about one way of soloing the spider on stage 20 with using one free-to-play champion that we all can get in Akoth the Seer. But before we get into, into that, let's talk about today's sponsor of the video, and that is Infinite Magic Raid. So currently in Infinite Magic Raid, which is a turn-based gacha game, kind of like, you know, Raid Shadow Legend. Uh, Raid Shadow Legends that is doing some amazing events right now for the Halloween and that is you know as you can see in the background we have you know a new exclusive legendary in Little Jack Little Jack has an amazing kit and the thing is you can only get him during this event after that there's no other way to get him at the same time if you log if you log in three days in a row in the next following seven days you're gonna get yourself some nice so nice rewards at the same time you're gonna get yourself a, a free epic champion in seal that again has a pretty good pretty good uh, kid that's he's he's actually a stripper and we know just like in raid how important strippers are and at the same time there's some exclusive promo codes like Infermagic is a really amazing game that has some crazy quality of life features that we kept mentioning and kept asking uh, to for raid to get to get them implemented and guess what at the same time we're trying to ask that to get them in raid but we got them in infinite magic raid this game has four times speed it has some multi battles that you can do in the background you can close your game and the multi battles still go you can do arena at the same time that you do that they have some either RPG part of the game where you can quick claim some rewards that you know gather themselves up while you while you play the game but yeah it's it's go I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have the video of the I'm gonna have a dedicated video on my other channel that's gonna talk more about this I'm gonna pin that over here or over there in one of these two spots so you can go check them out at the same time I'm gonna have a link in the description the pinned comment you know where you can download the game and join it and obviously I'm gonna have the link to to the video in the description the pinned comment so make sure you go check it out guys but let's jump back into the Ray video so basically what you're seeing here in the background is Akoth the Seared soloing the spider on 20. I uh, I run this quite a few times and it has never, never failed. So basically what the first place you know, I was asking yesterday, I wonder where I saw this. So I think the first time I actually saw it, I think it was for, from Tairaku. So shout out Tairaku. He has some really nice, uh, some really nice videos on some interesting solo comps that you can see. And you know what? I saw that he could do it. I didn't necessarily check his video to see, to see exactly how he did it because most of the time I'm kind of trying to do this for myself. So the whole idea about this is, you know, Akov's kit is pretty insane, so let's just have a look at it. So on day one, he just has a, what, 60-70% chance of placing a decreased crit rate, 30% decreased crit rate for two turns. That means, you know, doesn't matter what dungeon you face or what boss you face, unless it's arena content, you're never going to be crit because they have this start with a standard 15% crit rate. If you're on affinity under 15, that's 30. So this could be helpful, but this is not really that important here. It's all about his other skills. On day two, he has an AoE that places HP burn. The, it says only a 20% chance. However, the more enemies are alive, the higher the chance is with 20% per each enemy. So even if you have a wave of just 5, this is 100% HP burn on a 3 turn cooldown that doesn't even need books. You don't need books on the A2. Same thing, for the A1, you don't really care about the books. I just fully booked him because I have no idea why I did it a while back. But, you know, I have him fully booked. <clears throat> At the same time, on his A2, he has an AoE. It has the chance of increasing, you know, the cooldown of skills goes to 75%, uh, wait, no, 70%. Still, you don't really care about that, but you care about this part that also places a shield buff equal to 20% of this champion's max HP on all allies. Basically, it's mostly himself. He also has this as a passive instant. He activates this skill when this champion is revived by Rian the Conjurer. Again, don't really care about that one. You only care about the shield part because... You're going to want him to solo, so getting that shield extra in there is going to help you out to be able to survive, you know, more, more of the hits. At the same time, he has an interesting passive. He has a 25% chance to place a fear debuff for one to whenever they receive a, a... Whenever an enemy receives an HP burn damage. But which, which, which is the thing that he places on day 2, obviously. So basically, if this happens, you have a chance that the spider rings don't take a turn because you cannot fear the main spider. At the same time, he brings an ally HP in all battle by 25%, which obviously it's good for someone that's a solo because, you know, you're going to have him in the lead and you're going to get more HP from this one. So the way that I run it, 
and in, uh, in order to make it faster is I put it as a preset and I just make him prioritize day two and then the A3. This one works without the preset, okay? It just works full auto, no preset, no nothing, but if you don't have the presets, it goes longer. If you have the presets, there's an average time of like one minute and 30 to 40 seconds. That's the average that he does with the preset. Without the presets, it can go to like two minutes, two minutes, 30, but it still does not fail. Now let's have a look at the stats and let's have a look at the masteries that ACOS has. So basically I'm building him, <coughs> sorry. Basically, you want to have him in a regeneration set plus immortal. It might work without the immortal, but it's a little bit scary. So for what I tried, without the immortal, it can be dodgy and it can fail. So I'd rather just show you the exact build that it's going to 100% going to work for you. So if you have the regeneration plus immortal, that's going to be perfect. The stats that you should be aiming for is I have him around 250 uh, speed. You know, somewhere around 60,000 HP. Try to get like 3.5k defense. Like, I could lower the defense to, for the sake of getting more HP, but this one still works. I have no issues with it. You want to get somewhere around 320, 330 resistance because you soloing the boss means you're going to take all the hits from the spiderlings. By doing that, you have a chance of getting those poisons. If you have, if you don't have the resist, the poisons are gonna kill you. So you're not gonna die by the hits, but you're gonna die because of the poisons that keep taking from your max HP, basically. And at the same time, you want some around like 220 accuracy is more than enough. You know, you can go, uh, the ideal one is 250, but 220 has worked just fine for me. So I don't have a problem with that. So these are the rough stats that you wanna have. Like I said, region plus immortal. And one other thing that I tested and I noticed doesn't really work, even though it's, you know, you'd think it shouldn't matter that much, but it did not work without masteries. I tried without masteries with regen and immortal. It was too, it was too dodgy. It was too scary. He wasn't regenerating enough HP. He wasn't getting enough turns. So I just gave him masteries as well. And let's talk about the masteries and let me show you how I chose them and why I chose them. So basically, if we go the logical ones, obviously the support you support, you can go either the accuracy or the HP to have more HP. I chose to go the accuracy one because I knew the accuracy might be a bit low and you know that 810 HP didn't help me <clears throat> that much. After that, I chose to take the shield better because he does a shield on his A3. So having that shield be bigger is definitely a good thing. At the same time, I took Leon Hands that heals you by, you know, gives, gives you 5% extra heal. And also Healing Savior that gives yourself more heal and bigger shield if you're under 40% HP. <clears throat> the reason for this is because even the regeneration immortals are influenced by Leon Hands. So you, can, you get more healing, even though it's not a, a spell cast. It's just the region sets that actually helps. You're definitely going to go with that. Then I chose to come back uh, to come down this route. Swarm Smiter. Then I took Lord of Steel because, you know, a little bit more HP from that Immortal. I took the Spirit Haze because obviously everybody's got all the food that you bring along are going to die. And you're going to get 24 extra uh, extra speed. And at the same time, I took Oppressor because this one's going to be... Obviously, this one's going to go on as you're going to have the HP burn. So <clears throat> this one actually influences a lot. Most of the solo builds that you're going to see for Spider, for Dragon, for any dungeon that you're going to do, most champions are going to have Oppressor because this one makes the Termiter tick faster and they will get more Termiter by having this one. At the same time, down the defense tree, I took the resistance. I took the rejuvenation again, increases the, increasing the amount and uh, of healing and the value of shields that he will receive. Again, he does both. The, he does the shield and gets the heal. Shadow heal is something that's pretty interesting. I mean, you could have gotten maybe Resurgent, but I don't think there's going to be a head that's going to hit you for 25% HP. But having Shadow heal helps because guess what? The main spider gets some turns and what does she do? She basically heals by eating all the spider lengths and then she hits. So by having that heal in there, you're going to heal by 6% of the, of, the, of the max HP each time an enemy is healed, which always, you know, always happens at least once, if not twice. So this gives you some more backup here, which is amazing. Then delay death helps you because you're going to take the AOE hits from the, from the main spider. It doesn't influence the the damage from the spiderlings maybe as much because you know they they hit you they died and new one spawns i'm not sure that one works exactly like that but at least from the main spider you get less damage and then i also chose 
to go with Harvest of Despair because, you know, getting that leech that can land on some Spiderlings because you, you have a chance to land fear from the from the passive gives you an extra layer of protection because you land a leech, you do an AoE hit, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna heal even more. So having as much healing in, in this one helps. Like I said, so far it hasn't failed for me. I think I've done like 100 runs, hasn't failed once. So, you know, this is pretty reliable. The last one that maybe I would take, the last ones that I would take here, like I don't need any other masteries, but I would possibly take Cycle of Revenge just in case he gets crit. <clears throat> and then maybe I would tr I would get Master Hexer for a chance to extend those HP buns. But yeah, this is going to be it for the video today, guys. I'm, I'm going to make another video about something similar, but that's going to be, you know, a little uh, on, uh, at a later stage because I still need to book a champion. I'm going to try to make another solo build for the sake of Spider because you know what? Why not, guys? Why not be efficient and try to get points for the dungeons and get points for the champion training, cha uh, champion trainings that are at the same time like we have them right now? You know, like right now we have the spider tournament going on for the sake of the Mori game fusion, and at the same time there's still the champion training event going on. So I was like, you know what? Let me double dip. I already did that myself. I finished myself the spider pretty easily. Then I stopped. You know, I can focus finishing off the champion training if I want. But yeah, this is going to be it for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do enjoy my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me grow the channel. And I'm going to see you all in the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys.